Hi, I am Anika, a third year BBA student and I am also a community service volunteer working closely with the student wellness cell of Waxon University. Dr. Raul Villamarin Rodriguez is the Vice President Waxon University and holds the Steven Pinker Professorship of Cognitive Psychology and Klesavo Chair Professorship in Integrative Research and Digital Learning. Dr. Rodriguez is an adjunct professor at Universidad del Externado, Colombia and member of International Advisory Board at IBS Renepa Russian Federation and a member of IAB University of Pex Faculty of Business and Economics. Dr. Rol has a scholarship named after him in ZBIS China. He is also part of PRME IFI Expert Pedagogy Group India representative. Sir is also an active advocate for mental health and it is an honor to have him here on the occasion of World Mental Health Day 2022. Hi, Dr. Rol. Uh, I would like to begin this candid conversation with introducing the theme for this year's World Mental Health Day, which is making mental health a global priority for all. So in the same spirit, my first question is, how do we truly make mental health a global priority? You will have to change mindsets quite a bit, because unfortunately, mental health well-being does not really <clears throat> monetize or create any profit immediately. Con consequently, companies and individuals don't see any particular purpose or benefit to it. However, it has been seen lately even in the Olympic Games that without really mental health, you cannot operate, not because you will not succeed, but because you will not have satisfaction. And it's important to remember that Happiness is a luxury, but satisfaction is a moral obligation. So it's important that we all have it for each of our activities. So in the same destigmatizing spirit, how do we address the accessibility of mental health care in a global scenario? Well, uh, global health care is quite accessible across. The only concern would be fair world countries, so-called fair world countries or rural areas for that matter across different spectrums of society. If you look at this, the West, uh, be it the European Union, the US, Canada, mental health is pretty much accessible to everybody. The only thing is that it costs money and is normally not free and is neither, it's cheap, it's quite expensive if, if you consider it on counseling one-to-one. -one. However, the core roots of society are longing on, on rural areas which do not really have access to mental health, neither they have much time to think about it because their main priority right now is on surviving. And mental health is not even considered in the equation of survival. Consequently, substantial education campaigns and that to through schools and universities are required to make people understand that. But we cannot ignore the fact that you cannot convince somebody of doing something unless and until their basic needs, food, shelter, clothes are Cobra. So what we can try may not be conducive, consequently there is a barrier. So firstly, social inequality has to be solved, then we can talk about implementing large-scale mental health campaigns. Also the investments at workplace wellness programs have shown a considerate impact on you know, the productivity of the employees. So how do we encourage these investments at every single workplace? So like you said, in third world countries, it is still a stigma, mental health. So how do we encourage you know, investments in wellness programs in such places as well to boost the productivity? Mental health, as I said, does not really generate any profits for a company. So of course we know at the individual level, it can really generate substantial long-term solutions, but it does not create any profit immediately. Consequently, nobody really cares too much about it. Neither the CEO or the top management pays attention to it. In fact, if you are not feeling all right, they will send you on leave or maybe loss of pay for that matter, depending on the scenario. But you never are able to express it. And the fact that companies, if you look at examples, the companies have maternity and paternity leave, but they don't have a mental health leave, neither they have pet leave or whatever may be the case, any particular leave for a elongated period which is paid for because you may be affected by whatever conditions those may be. However, 
you have to remember that even organizations as large as the United Nations try to push for mental health, not extremely directly through the SDGs, but in combination with the SDGs. Unfortunately, mental health is a very broad term. Very broad term. So there are many aspects within it. So if we talk about mental health, that is hardly a plan. We have to make it very strategic. And how we want to do it, which companies, why those companies? So we know that mental health is important, but why? Why is it important? What is the ultimate goal that will come in the picture? So unless there is a sensitization to the companies, and that will not happen by doing programs. That will only happen when the companies see true value to it and what they will lack if they don't do it, basically. So I personally believe that, you know, it is high time that companies start taking care of the mental health of their employees because in, in that it directly impacts their productivity, right? So it, I think it should be important to organizations. And my next question is, what are the initiatives you know, that Student Wellness Cell has taken to promote well-being in the community. Any event you know, that stood out to you, any initiative? Student Wellness Cell at Waxing is pretty much like another school. Uh, in fact, I think many of them, the Student Wellness Cell itself works harder than many of the schools itself, uh, considering the number of events, considering the, the outreach. And if you look from the external approach, because the, the cell operates in two, two dimensions. One is the outreach outside of the university with the Waxing Elevate program. And that, of course, was encountering the, the rural areas. And if you look at the inside, there are many other aspects, such as the human library, the peer-to-peer -peer counseling, the regular counseling sessions, the magazine, magazine, and all these dynamics. And of course, I saw the sessions uh, on different, by different experts on different topics. And all these particular dynamics and events, initiatives, is what drives the team to con keep going. Because year after year, of students who are doing a three, four, five years degree, they're still there, and they're still working very much hard on that. And even if you don't help the big masses, you're still helping two to three people, and they're actually being supported, and they're coming to the picture for that. So ultimately, you have to understand psychology as a field and psychology as a large umbrella of, of aspects for, for humanity is by far the key most important field in social sciences that can affect each of us and that goes from the tech side to the human side unfortunately people don't really see that and they don't understand mental health as much and we have to understand each individual at core so the initiatives really help a lot covering all these spectrums of cognitive and clinical psychology across different dynamics. Right. So on the occasion of World Mental Health Day, what are the things that you do take, to take care of your mental health? I think the most important part is I don't make people's problems my problems, uh, which is clinical psychology 101. Uh, you cannot help somebody that does not want to get help. And more importantly, you should not connect so much that those problems become yours and you absorb them and you own them. And aside of this, which I think most people will be affected by the same, is do not expect the world to change to adjust to your concerns, rather adjust your concerns to the world dynamics, because people normally want very passionately they want to understand their concerns, they want to adjust to their concerns, because their concerns are the most unique and most important matter that exists in the whole universe. But unfortunately, that's a lie, and that is not the case. And just imagine, if I have a problem, and I think the world is the problem, changing the world is very tough, but changing me is easier. So that dynamic, I think, is mostly what is happening to this societal progress at all levels and of course at the student level as well. Right. So any special message that you would like the viewers to know? Uh, my approach to mental health is pretty aggressive. If not about the campaign alone, but mostly about not letting small things affect you in, in large scale, not trying to make the minorities problems the majority problem which is what tends to happen most of the times, a very trivial problem, which is actually trivial, not on subjective basis, but on objective basis, becomes a large scale problem for no reason. So if you look at it from a metaphoric viewpoint, 
it's important to remember that you have to choose between getting busy living or getting busy dying. And dying in a metaphoric way of you are going to really drown and sulk into your problems or are you going to face them up front and try to find the optimal solution for it, to land into that oasis of happiness and of course satisfaction. Thank you, Dr. Roll, for sharing your views on the mental health. I had fun listening to you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you.